Welcome back. You're watching To The Point. There now seem to be several answers to the question, why did Sonia Gandhi refuse the Prime Ministership in 2004? Natwar Singh's claim that she did so under pressure from Rahul Gandhi, who was scared she would be killed, is disputed by former Home Secretary Ram Pradhan, who was a close Sonia aide from 1999 to 2003. Mr. Pradhan has a very different account. He says that as far back as 1999, Sonia had told him, as well as M.L. Fotedar, that she would refuse the top job. Joining me now to give us more details is former Home Secretary and the former head of Sonia Gandhi's AICC office, Ram Pradhan. Mr. Pradhan, last week, former Foreign Minister Natpur Singh claimed in his book, One Life is Not Enough, that Sonia Gandhi had turned down the Prime Ministership in 2004 because her son Rahul was scared she would be killed and was determined to prevent his mother taking up the job. You believe this is not true and in your book, My Years with Rajiv and Sonia, you say that as far back as April 1999, Sonia had decided she would not accept the Prime Ministership. Let me begin by asking you, how do you know this? You know, I think you are mixing up the 1999 and the 2004 incident. In 1999, I was with Mrs. Gandhi, working with her, and when the Bajpai government fell on 16th of April, on 17th April we started working out as to what is to be done. Obviously, as leader of the Congress Party, which was in majority, she had to go to President to claim Congress-led government. And when she wanted to go to Dr. Narayanan to see him, I asked her, what is her intention? Would, he be, would she offer herself to the Prime Minister? And then she said, no, Radhanji, I am a person, I am an Indian national, but I am a person of foreign origin and I am also conscious that I do not have administrative experience as such. So I would not offer myself as Prime Minister. Now the, where Rahul Gandhi comes in the picture, that incident has been described by Natwar Singh in relation to 2004. Uh, Mr. Pradhan, can I interrupt you at in that point? Mr. Pradhan, I'm interrupting you because I'm not confusing yeah. the, and mixing up the two incidents. I was actually using your instance and of 1999 to prove that Natwar Singh is wrong. Isn't that the point you made in your newspaper yeah, interview you, to the Hindu? That Natwar Singh is wrong because yeah, you've known I since 1999 she didn't want the job. Correct. you are right. What I wanted to convey was that what she had decided in 1999, she kept the same stand in 2004. And she had already decided to decline to be the Prime Minister. Although she had to go through certain procedures of consultation with the Congress leader and others. And what Natwar has referred to a meeting of consultations. And of course she had to consult others. Okay who are aspirant for the Prime Minister Absolutely. before she could announce who was her choice. I want, to, I want to pick up on certain things that emerge from the fact that in 1999 she made it clear to you that she didn't want the job. And the reason she gave you, as you said a moment ago, was that she was a person of foreign origin and she did not think it would be appropriate for her to become Prime Minister. In other words, it was her Italian origin that was the obstacle, not fear that she would lose her life. Is that correct? You know, uh, I'm sorry, there is a rainy rain. It is raining in Mumbai and the voice has not come clearly. Could you just re ask me again? Absolutely. Question? You said that the reason Sonia Gandhi in 1999 had told you that she didn't want to be Prime Minister is because she was a person of foreign origin and she didn't think it would be appropriate for a person of Italian origin to become Prime Minister of India. In other words, it was her foreign origin that was the obstacle, not fear that she would be killed. No, there were two factors. One, of course, was that she had joined active politics only in 1998. A few months later, this incident took place in 1999. She was just trying to emerge in the Indian political system, including leadership of the Congress party. So she, that was also a consideration in her mind, 
that she was not ready to accept any office as such. That was first point. Now the reason for that she which we have explained was that although I am an Indian national, I am not of Indian origin and I do not have administrative experience. So I will not offer myself to become the Prime Minister. So that was the reason. So in fact you are saying to me that there were two reasons why in 1999 she wasn't prepared to become Prime Minister. First, that she didn't have the necessary experience, she'd only been in politics for roughly a year, a year and a half. And secondly, because of her foreign origin, she didn't think it was appropriate she should become Prime Minister of India. There were two reasons. Am I right in understanding it in that way? Absolutely. Uh, what did you say, sir? Absolutely Can you say correct. that again? Are you agreeing no, with I me? Said absolutely correct. Okay. What you have said. Now, I agree with you. If I'm correct, then does it not follow, Mr. Pradhan, that the assumption everyone in India made that Sonia Gandhi was renouncing the Prime Ministership was an incorrect assumption. Her decision was based on her belief that she A lacked experience and B it would be inappropriate for a person of foreign origin to become Prime Minister of India. This was not to do with renunciation as everyone concluded. Would you agree with that? No, I, 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 I do not agree with the way you have phrased it. The point was, she was a very, I found her a very intelligent person who thought and who acted after considering all interests and particularly the interest of the Congress party of which she had become the president. And she found that it would not be correct on her part to accept the prime minister at that stage, prime ministership. And therefore she said no, according to me. There is nothing like renunciation in politics. In politics, one has to accept if compulsory, if it is what kind one is compelled. But she had a choice okay. of not becoming prime minister, and she decided I will not become prime minister. Now, in your at book, at that type of point of time, in your book, you also say that Sonia Gandhi shared this decision taken in April 1999 with another gentleman. That other gentleman was M. L. Fotedar. Perhaps the two of you were together when she spoke to the two of you. Would Mr. Fotedar be in a position yes. to confirm what you're just telling me? <laughs> I, I, I presume that he was there when, I, when she spoke to me because you see what happened. I had gone, I had entered her room earlier and I had taken a kind of scenario of what is going to happen and we were discussing that and at that stage in the letter which was written to the president, a draft of a letter I had prepared and in that letter I had mentioned that we will form a government and, and, and I had mentioned I will form a government. She scored that and she said, Pradhanji, I will not accept to become Prime Minister of India. That conversation took place in that context, if you see what I have written. There. And was ML Fotedar present when that conversation happened? Pardon? Was M. L. Fotedar present when that conversation happened? Yeah, yeah, I think so. He was present at that time. He was present, but he joined a little later. I don't because you know it was a very short meeting before she left to see the president. And I was with her, and Fotedarji joined me. I cannot say whether he was sitting next to me when she said this, but he was there in the meeting. So. Presumably, if he was there, he should be able to corroborate what you're saying. Of course, of course, you, you can certainly ask him. All right. And whether he wishes to corroborate that, it is for him to decide. Let's move to another subject. Your book also reveals that you were convinced that there was an LTTE mole in 10 Janpath, particularly during the 1991 Lok Sabha elections. How sure are you of this? You know, actually, when Rajiv Gandhi's assassination took place, there were all kinds of theories as who could have been the party who assassinated him. All kinds of rumors were floating. But we, what happened was that immediately after that, government announced setting up of commission, Verma Commission. Verma Commission was followed by Jain Commission. Now, Jain Commission itself thought that there was some kind of conspiracy against to kill uh, Rajiv Gandhi and they asked that this requires to be investigated. 
and in that connection and this was four years later four and a half years later we started looking into the sequence of events and what was happening and we found that in the first few months of 1999 quite a few LTTA leaders were visiting Rajiv Gandhi 1999 or do you mean 1991 sir. do you mean 1991 no, 1990, uh, no 91 90, 91 sorry 91 surreptitiously in the night they were brought he had a talk probably they wanted to build bridges but now we know that LTTE is a great one for misleading and they wanted to create an impression that they wanted to break build bridges with rajiv gandhi you know i want and to can i stop I, you i want to stop you for a moment i want to quote from your book here is a sentence from your book there is yeah, no please. doubt there is no yeah. doubt in my mind a mole from the ltte had found refuge in ten janpath how sure are you of this yes yeah i tell you when this incident took place when look when we looked back i found that how does anyone know we knew by that time ltt had committed the assassination but the question was how did he know that a particular time a particular minute rajiv gandhi would be at sri perambur what would be arrangements there and how the people were to remain present that is ltt to carry out the task this could not have been done unless there was a ltte mole who operated who knew what was happening within the ten janpan okay and therefore i specially mentioned it was the ltte mole it was no other indian or anything it was ltte mole you said something operated. else and i came to that conclusion you said something else in your book Pardon? you you said something else in your what book can you hear me now can you hear me yes you said something else in yes, your book yes. you said that sonia gandhi yes also believes there was an LTTE mold in Tenjanpath no i have said at the end of that uh, uh, chapter that i am sure that G- mrs gandhi who was also looking into what happened and she would come to a similar conclusion i believe she came kalkage would come to the similar conclusion that's well, what no no I'm you thinking. went forgive me you went stronger than that i'm going to quote from your book you say i know for sure that sonia gandhi who was yeah. away in a methi virtually throughout the 1991 lok sabha election campaign feels the same way and i'm just asking you how do you know for sure that sonia gandhi believes there was an ltte mole in tenjanpath yeah i know no she came to know also four and a half years later when she looked into the whole movement what was happening and what i had come to a conclusion and i have not quoted my conversation with her later on but i came to the conclusion that she also believed in the same thing did, did and you, i have said i know for sure that sonia gandhi who was away in amethi virtually throughout the 1991 lok sabha elections campaign feels the same way absolutely that's feels the sentence the i quoted a moment ago all right let's yeah, move on mr correct. pradhan you were in charge of sonia gandhi's mm-hmm. office at the aicc from 1998 to 2003 Do you accept Mr. Nathwar yes. Singh's verdict that her hold over the Congress party is more strong and more firm than that of Jawaharlal Nehru and Indira Gandhi? I I can't say that you know after all you are talking about Sonia Gandhi isn't it? Yes I am. Sonia Gandhi's hold. You see after all one has to realize Nehru was a different person. We know all his stature. Indira Gandhi was also brought up in the politics of the Congress party almost from her youth and she became a Congress president as early as in 1958 now Mrs Sonia Gandhi was of a different category she came as a wife of Rajiv Gandhi she was not involved in indian politics she no no i'm said. asking a different question she sir was not even just a moment i'm asking a different yeah. question natwar singh says that her hold over congress as president was a stronger hold and a tougher hold than that of indira gandhi now you were in charge of her aicc office from 98 to 2003 do you agree with that comment well if, yeah if you ask me in 2004 the statement is correct because by that time she had paid a firm hold over the congress party it by 
Not in 1999. Okay, that's a very interesting answer. By 2004, her hold was firm and tougher than that even of her mother-in-law. Natwar Singh also says that Sonia Gandhi is a prima donna. He describes her as an ambitious, authoritarian and stern leader. Is that how you found her? Well, that is, that is his opinion. No, I'll tell you. I'll describe her this way. She is highly intelligent. She is highly perceptive. She reads everything that is put before her or brought to her notice. She applies her mind and she is capable of taking independent decisions. Is she That's a prima donna? Is she a now, prima donna? Now all those adjectives with... No, no. All those adjectives that were as used are Nutworth's way of describing. I would not, I would not ag say that I, I agree with any of those. I would not put that way. Okay. I have described in the way in which I want it. Now, so, not and I Singh, hope I'm quite clear about it. Nutworth Singh also has another comment to yes. make about Sonia Gandhi. He says, and I'm quoting him, under her, dissent is smothered, free discussion fenced in. Would you agree with that? No, this is not clear. It has not come clearly. Please repeat. Natwar Singh says that under Sonia Gandhi, dissent was smothered, free discussion fenced in. Would you agree with that? No, unfortunately because of the rains here, your question is not coming out very clearly. And I'm sorry to ask you to repeat again, Mr. because I would like to reply to that. I'll, I'll try for the last time. Natwar Singh says that under Sonia yeah. Gandhi, dissent is smothered, free discussion is fenced in. He, that is her mother-in-law. No, 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 Sonia Gandhi. No, let's leave it. Clearly, we've got problems. I have to explain to the audience, there is a very heavy downpour no, in please, Mumbai at the moment because of the monsoons, as a result of which you, the OB is malfunctioning and Mr. Pradhan can't yeah. hear me. Mr. Pradhan, I'll try one last question before I end. Natwar Singh describes Sonia Gandhi yeah. as obsessively secretive and suspicious. He adds, she's an insecure person. Is that your impression of her? You know, actually, one must realize that Congress party is such a party that one has to work by oneself at that level. One has to make judgments, one has to meet people. He has described them as secretive. And yes, one has to be secretive because at that level, if you are taking decisions with a consensus, you don't announce first your decision and then start building consensus. So to some extent, one has to be secretive in these matters. I have no doubt about it. She was right. And she, she, but she was extremely communicative when you had one to one person conversations with her. One, one quick interruption. That was my experience. One interruption. Is Sonia Gandhi insecure, yeah. as Natwar Singh says? Is she an insecure person? Is she what? Is she insecure? Well, that is his judgment. I did not find her insecure at all. Right from the moment I started working with her, I found that she was very clear-headed, firm, and she told me that she has accepted the presidentship of the Congress because she has a obligation to the heritage of her family All right. and to the Congress party. Mr. Pradhan. So she was very clear. I don't agree with what, what Natwar has said. Mr. Pradhan, we've had Not to Trump. battle with the monsoon rains. A lot of what you said seems a little distorted and disjointed simply because you weren't able to hear me. I'm very grateful you joined us. I'm very grateful that you made time for us. But I apologize to the audience that the monsoon rains are something that we simply cannot take on and defeat. If you have been, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Good night.